Welcome everybody to another awesome night of Valorant here at CF1 as we've got Rocky Esports facing off against the USD Coyotes. I am Stadel24 and I'm going to be joined tonight by the wonderful Speezy24 as we bring you this action. How are you doing tonight, buddy? I'm good. I'm excited. We saw a good round of games yesterday, and uh, we definitely have some teams looking for redemption tonight. Both of these teams, Rocky Mountain College and University of South Dakota, lost in their re their week one matchups, uh, and I would say lost pretty convincingly. So let's see if these two teams can bounce back tonight and get their first dub on the board. I mean, the one thing that can be said about when you when you kind of get rolled over is that it shows you the things that don't work. And when you know the things that don't work, it's a lot easier to practice the things that do. So hopefully these teams over the past week have kind of had some time to put things together and uh, and kind of give themselves a bit of a boost. <laughs> I'm really hoping, yeah, I'm anticipating. really hoping we see Icebox tonight. You know, you know, I, you I, were I saying it like in the if teams want to, it's the wild card. I feel like if, if you want to <laughs> throw a team off their off their game, take it to Icebox. Yeah, you know it's a. It's a map we've seen quite a bit in qualifiers. You know, VCT, we saw it a lot being played there, but it's just something that a lot of people aren't super confident on, right? It is, like you said, it is that wild card. If you're a fan of CSGO and you're just joining Valorant or you're just looking to play Valorant, it's kind of got that uh, vertigo effect where it's the new map. No one really knows too much about it. They can't tell you if it's offense, defensive sided. It's wide open. You can have a lot of fun. But I will say that's the one map where I kind of think it's a fiesta especially with the meta we're in in terms of weapons there's so many close quarters in that map so you could get blasted by the bucky around one corner you could have a frenzy running at you around the other corner and then somewhere someone's in the back with a stinger so uh, i definitely i would like to see it i want to see these teams pull out something unique you know if they can get that as a pocket pick and really really take hold of that map and show these other teams that hey look this is our pick you're gonna have to ban it against us or else we're gonna choose it and roll you so i want to see something like that from one of these two teams tonight now how about heroes what kind of picks are you looking to see out of these two colleges as we as we take to the battlefield i mean steidl i know this is our first cast together but everybody who watches knows i'm the biggest simp for viper she's my girl she can do no wrong it's never gonna happen in one of these cf1 matches but if we could see she's it tonight it would be I'm saying she's there, you know, the toxic or the snake pit can hold down an entire site, especially if you're on icebox, put it dead center in the middle and make these teams push you. This, it's going to hold down the entire map. So I'd like to see a Viper. I guarantee you we will not. Um, you know, Jet picked up a small nerf with her smokes going down from seven seconds to four seconds. In my opinion, she's still an automatic lock in. You have to get that Viper, oh, yeah. uh, excuse me, the Jet going. Jet op, you can do no wrong. The other thing is I'm interested to see if these teams are still going to be running an Omen or a Brimstone. We saw some changes to Omen. That Paranoia went from 200 credits to 400 credits. 
it's still to me i'm still leaning more towards that omen camp i'd rather have the small four smokes over the three that brimstone has but mm -hmm. you know it's really a personal preference with some of these guys you got those molly lineups you can play off sites and play a bit safer so really curious to see about this but Schneidel, what are your pocket picks give me something you want to see if we can make one prediction for the night so what's the one so thing? my 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 make a wish hero uh of the of the lineup is, is gotta be yoru just because of the fact with that he is new and i'm i'm a big big person for those those wild card picks um where you know maybe the community hasn't quite figured out all the nooks and crannies and and fun things you can do with the hero and what better place to see that happen than on a stage like this so i'd really like to see Senyoru uh thrown into the mix as we get there and and as we see the teams kind of picking what they want here i'm not seeing too many surprises but with the frenzy meta i've got to go with the reina Early on, getting that frenzy, being able to have those devours in your pocket, a 1v2, a 1v3 is is so much less daunting at that point. And, and you can really kind of sort of carry your team. Absolutely. She's that feast or famine character. If your reign is popping off, it's going to be a nightmare for the enemy team. Just dismissing around every corner, especially in a pistol round, being able to get one kill, devour, and go to 100, 100 health with 50... Uh, 50 overheal it's gonna be a nightmare for this for the enemy team but again that's if you can frag i can't believe i'm saying this but we saw a viper locked in i don't know who that was that's gonna be blue frog from the side of yep. university of south dakota locking in the viper blue frog please make she's going to go with like no, no real smokes genius. except for that that goes there yeah it's an interesting choice i want to see how that, that pays off agent absolutely so viper has to stay alive if she gets picked early in the round it's gonna be very very difficult for them to get onto a site but as we see here usd coyotes will be starting on the defensive side we see some frenzies come out folks get ready because this is going to be a good one like we said the two teams on. really looking to get a foothold and get their first victories on the board man it's interesting to see the coyotes playing the arena back of sight here on b Often you see that Reyna in the, or sorry, that Ray inside of Hookah. That's going to allow for Rocky Esports to make a little bit of an advance onto B as they start to gather some information. You see that Sova era popping out into the back of Elbow. Both teams, though, playing very patiently. A little bit of a peek there, but it's not going to give too much away. Yeah, both teams, like you said, really taking their time, trying to feel this one out. Viper going to be the lone person holding A site as we see the rotation come out. Now, I really want to see what Rocky Esports does here. If they're going to fully commit, because that Viper smoke is a one way. If you walk through this, you will get absolutely destroyed. But the Omen smoke is going to come out. They know the hits on and Blaze just annihilates Blue Frog, making him look like a poison dart frog. But great paint cans from Jaller takes down one. So we have ourselves a 4v4, 30 seconds left. Spike's going to go down right outside the Humvee. And so is Bard. Bard gets his end in lamps. Jaller, can he get one more? Show me something here. Big dog's got to eat. And so does Jaller. Gets the extra paint can, finds one, but nades themselves. Not something you want to see every day. Unit Derp finds one with that frenzy. Can they find another? Tries to reload. And Red Frog's going to take down Unit Derp, giving the USD Coyotes their first round on the board. And you know, you got to give it to Rocky Esports. They were able to get that plant down. So they are going to be able to get 300 extra credits. It allows them to get the stinger here in round two, which which can be a which can be a big momentum builder. But interestingly enough, it looks like we... Is that a, is that a Marshall? I think it is for Veggie Clapper. That's going to be an interesting choice. You got to go to... Big Dog's got to eat on the, the, uh, on the Marshall there. It's not too much of an investment. I do like the attempt. I want to see if they can get something to... Uh, get something going with that but i'm curious to see where they're going to watch with this it looks like right now they're going to be peeking into hookah from the back of ace or excuse me they're going to be watching heaven from a site that's going to be an interesting choice there still remaining with their with their with their similar defense three on a two on b as a quick rush through hookah from rocky esports trying to put a little bit of presence here on b gonna have to stop with that cypher cage a lot of information there. Late to take out the arrow. They're going to know that they've got one in the back of the point. And most likely one at elbow. See the Cypher just sitting on the camera trying to get as much information as possible. But nobody going to give themselves away from Rocky Esports. Making themselves quiet. Hopefully maybe trying to get a bit of a feint on a rotation. 
Yeah, and they're playing this one slow. It's almost like they're too afraid to commit to a site, which is something that could be, again, it can work to your advantage if you can pull all the members of one t of the enemy team to a site and then push the opposite. It will work phenomenally, but look at this camera from Red Frog. They have no idea where it is, and he knows oh. everything. Red Frog, and one fish, off. two fish. That's beautiful right there from Red Frog. Left. But Frog, Riley and Unitary are able one to find one. Remaining. Red Frog makes it three on the round. Jolly Roller, Jolly Rory with another Boombot kill. But 1v3. It's Arena, so they can go nuts if they're able to find one kill and heal up. But Viper is on the lurk. She's not going to let him get away Ten with this. Seconds left. The smart play here, let time expire so they don't get the loss bonus and then find the frag. But that's not going to be the case as Red Frog finds the 4K and secures the second round for USD Coyotes. And we're going to get a quick look at that camera. It's so perfectly placed. Nobody even checking that top arch, even though you know that the Cypher Red Frog has been playing that site. Yeah, and it's a difficult site to take if you're the side of Rocky Esports. USD only has one Sentinel on this team. That's not the site you want to continue to push. But as we look at the minimap going into round number three here, first gun round, it looks like they're going to continue to push Cypher. You kind of have to scratch your head at this one a bit and say, okay, well, hasn't worked the first two times. Maybe now that we have some weapons, things will go differently. So curious to see how this one's going to pan out for them, but... The recon dart almost immediately popped, and so is Atlas. Tan able to find the frag, and look at the Viper Curtain. Immediately goes up and you forces the enemy team to take unadvantageous fights. And this is the epitome of information gathering. Rocky able to figure out who's defending which site and where, and using that, able to find that first pick. Able to use their kill jo kill joy. Sorry to put that bomb down. And Riley trying to hold the corner, but he's going to get taken out through the smoke by Veggie. As they move on to the point, the flashbang not going to be enough as they get mowed down. Blue Frog also found out in the back of sight. Only 18 health left, but Red Frog still in this elbow position. Not getting checked out. Able to take out the turret. That's going to put it down to a 2v3 as the raise from Long isn't going to get it done. Red Frog. Be able to know exactly where everybody is, but he's got two members to kill. And they are encroaching on him slowly, a bit of a pincer move. Yeah, this is a difficult one for Red Frog. They know where he is, and Tan finds the 3k. Very well played from Rocky Esports, playing together, not giving Red Frog the easy frag. As I mean, look at the scoreboard. Seven and one, just absolutely dominating this game Gotta right check now. That I mean, yeah, you really do. He's been in the same spot, has he not? The three rounds in a yeah, row. And he's, he's sat found over there on elbow kill. every single round. Every single round. He's been on the left of B in that elbow position on his camera. <clears throat> Just, you know, like taking photos. Six. <laughs> so we're going to see a bit of a switch up now from Rocky. They're going to put the smokes early out into heaven onto A. Cover going out. Coordinating with Blaze to make sure that the smokes are there. They know that the one way from Viper is sitting there, so they're going to peek that corner. That looks like it's going to scare him away a little bit. That one way no longer available. Going to have to wait for that to refresh as the rest of USD reposition themselves on the point. A lot of utility from Rocky Esports. It's a likely push, and they're going to call for the rotation. Oh, Riley! Riley, what a Headshot. shot! The one tap was a beauty from Riley, and look at the flank. Red Frog already on the flank. If he's able to find, if he gets the timing correct, he could find three members. Gonna turn the corner. Oh, just barely. That's the spike carrier down. 2v2. Red Frog, 1v2 now. Oh, can you do it again? What? No, stop that. Again? Red Frog able to clutch. What? I mean, they have to be in the jungle the way Red Frog's bouncing around right now. This is his, this is a playground for him. This is absolutely insane, and it's and it's not it's not that he's taking surprising angles. Rocky Esports, they just got to be careful with these rotations. Whether it's whether it's walking into a site and not checking your corners, or holding a site and not watching your back, you've got to make sure those angles are covered. Yeah, especially with a killjoy on the enemy team, you expect there to be an alarm bot somewhere to let you know, hey, we have somebody on the flank. You have that's kind of inexcusable, but I get it. You're trying to get the spike down. Unfortunate there for Rocky Esports as Red Frog is just putting on an absolute clinic so far. Let's see if they can keep this up because it's not easy to do the entire game. 
Oh, coyotes. They smell blood in the air. You see the rotations coming in quick, and they're gonna switch it up a bit and send their rays onto the flank. But once again, Rocky Esports, none the wiser to it. Only one member left. Moving on to points, Blaze. Nerves of Steel into their own smoke and gets caught out by Atlas. And USD starting to pick up a bit of momentum as the economy is beginning to get away from Rocky Esports. Yeah, and again, we talk about what happened last week. Rocky Mountain only able to find one round win in their match against the Cal State Golden Bears. University of South Dakota, they were able to find a total of six round wins across maps. So we're seeing here that this team, they understand what they're doing. They may have just been unprepared for that last match against the University of Oregon because it looks like they've been in the lab. They've done some VOD reviews. I mean, I, I find it hard to believe that this team lost 13-2, 13-4 to University of Oregon. Get out of my way. We're starting to see them get their confidence. <laughs> Rory going to peek that what? corner, knows the Sova's in waiting, and it's going to be up to Bard here on B. Gonna be using that ultimate, not finding anything from it, so just gonna try and hold that angle and make sure there's nobody peeking out from the container. This time, however, Rocky Esports leaving their ray on the backside to make sure that there is no flank. They hear the teleporter. Atlas is gonna open the door, trying to get some information, and gets more than information, gets himself a trade. And Rocky Esports down to a 3v4. Yeah, and one of the things USD is doing right now, if you, got, if you folks listening or watching are familiar with traditional sports, is what we call a heat check. You are trying to do anything to just put the nail in the coffin early. Make this enemy team just frustrated as can be. Something like that from oh. Blue Frog just turns on far. That was magic from Blue Frog. But play is not done yet as Veggie Clapper able to take him down. And again, that Go shot from off. Blue Frog this time. It's limit testing. Can I take this fight? We're up 4-1. Might as well. What do we have to lose? I mean, look at the economy. 7,000 credits on three members. Atlas not struggling by any means with 3,000 credits. The, the, the business is booming right now, Steidl. And if you're on the side of Rocky Esports, I mean, true to their name, things are looking a little rocky for them. Yeah, this is this is a make or break round for Rocky Esports right now, uh, especially when it comes to the bank. You can see Riley currently having to spend all of their credits to get a full setup. If they're not able to find at least one kill in this matchup, that might not be possible next go around. And we're starting to see that aggression poke out on B Long. The Ray is going to make a peek, give the information of what they saw, and head on back to the team where Riley going to be picking up an early pick onto an aggressive, aggressive play from USD Coyotes. And with one pick down at A. I believe Rocky gonna be pushing pretty hard on B. If I'm if I'm USD, I'm a little bit worried that they might be like gathered up there in bats. Absolutely, and I like the slower approach Rocky's starting to take. They found that Riley found that opening pick. They kind of gathered together collectively and said, "We have the man advantage. All we have to do now is play for trades." Tan gets one. 5v3. This is starting to look good for Rocky Esports, but Veggie Clapper oh takes God. the run it back and takes the head of Riley just completely off of that head glitch. Red Frog finds another one. 3v3. 3v2 now is Blaze able to take down Blue Frog. Red Frog looking for revenge for taking down the twin. Oh, you can't walk into the trap like that, Unit Derp. You know he's going to make you pay. Red Frog is always making them pay as another 4k comes in. Can anyone stop the frog right now? And at this point, when, you, when you're going at this B site, it's almost more important to get into that elbow. Flush out Red Frog. If you can take Red Frog out of the equation, you got a much better chance of keeping that point. Yeah, and one of the players I'm looking at for the side of Rocky Esports to do that is going to be Tan. Now, when I say to push them out of elbow like you talked about, Steidl, it's not necessarily getting the frag, but just creating space using that Sova drone to break one of those those trap wires Check for the cypher camera. Ping it if you can. You have to do something to really help him out here. This time around, it's going to be Rocky Esports sitting their entire team B long. And we've had a bit of a switch up. I like the fact that, they're that um, <clears throat> USD is playing their Rays here on B instead of their Reyna. As their Reyna is not playing aggressively, those grenades are going to be much more suited for clearing out Hookah. Seeing the smokes now coming down from USD. Oh, and a big paint can goes out. 
And it's going to take a bit of skin off a couple of members of Rocky Esports, but ultimately four of them will walk away okay. Rory, however, had their sights on that doorway, so they were able to see that rotation. And now down a man, Rocky Esports are going to have to figure out a new way to get onto B. Yeah, and I'm almost wondering if it's worth taking the teleporter or if you're Rocky Esports, do you send the full commit here? Gonna look to pick up a gun. You know Red Frog's in this position. Kenya spotted oh. Blaze, finally able to take out Red Frog. That's gonna have huge implications on this round as Jolly Rory, one of the last players left. But 4v1, 4v none. Blue Frog takes down Riley for the final frag of the round. And I mean, Steidl, looking at this right now, 7 to 1. You kind of want to think what's going on in that Rocky Esports team chat. What do you th what do you think they're trying to say to each other right now to get them back on track and to put them back in a position where they can win this game? Uh, I've got to think they just they're going. We did, we just need one plant. We got to gain our momentum back. You know they're they're ru they're running through the playbook. It looks like they may have exhausted what they've got uh, for B at the moment. Yeah. So they are going to go to go to A. But you know. It's motivational stuff right now. You got to keep the spirits up. The mental game is, is just as important as the mechanical one. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. I mean, these players are in this position for a reason. Tan spots one with that Silva ready. drone. Going to use the recon dart to scout the area. But I don't think that's where Tan wanted to do it. Looking to bend it around that corner, possibly. And the thing is, Steidl, you talk about getting the spike down. If they can get spike down and keep Tan alive, that's almost an instant, a guaranteed round when he has the Hunter's Fury, sit off of sight, pop the Hunter's Fury, and anytime you hear the spike get tapped, just blast away. But as I, I say that, Atlas able to take down one in showers. They're going to give the spike to Tan. Bit of an interesting decision there. But hey, to each their own. There's a reason I am the caster and they are the players. Because those who cannot Looks play Looks like cast, they're going for a bit of a trick cast, play. Yeah, throwing a bit of a fake here. It looks like, I mean, they have four ultimates. You have Lockdown, Empress, From the Shadows, and that Hunter's Fury. So you could fully commit over to one site, buy the rotation, and then give the the spike to Omen for that From the Shadows, get the easy plant. I doubt we'll see something left. like that from these folks, but there's 30 seconds left on the clock. They're going to have to make a move quick. Ahead. And with that, Tan, going to be sitting that, that Sonic Arrow onto the point, and that's going to give it away. You see the pain can immediately being thrown into the mix. USD covering their angles and covering their bases. As we're seeing the aggressive push from Riley on the Blue Frog on side A, he's able to pick up the pick. And he's going to be going for a quick rotation to try and get into the back of, so of the spawn. But the question is, are they going to be able to get there in time? Now to 2v2 on point, Veggie Clapper using that flash to help out. And Defuse, however, is still going to land. Wasn't able to make the rotation from A to B in time for that spawn flank to, to really come into effect. Yeah, and I don't even know if we necessarily saw them get the spike down there from the side of Rocky Esports. So that's a tough one. I understand the economical situation, right? You had a couple of Spectres and some Stingers working up against Vandals and Phantoms. Yeah. So not the easiest thing to do, but it was certainly possible. Again, I really want to see them dig a bit deeper into that strat book throw a fake here and there send some omen smokes onto one site and then commit to the other one they're playing a bit too passive for me right now it's great every now and then but at one point or another if you're at you're eight to one down you have to look for the full send full rush b or a and just take that numbers advantage as we see here riley though not able to find one from showers as atlas takes down the teammate in uniderp 5v4 for the side of usd coyotes Joller Joller rory finds one trigger oh, no. discipline here oh you oh, naughty no. armadillo's gonna spot three of oh, them no he sees gets him. one gets but two it's too late. that's oh, just no. absolute finessery from the side of Jolly Rory. That was beautiful. Red Frog gonna put the nail in the coffin. No, Riley sends Red Frog to the grave. There's still a little bit of hope left. Gets the heels up only to 72. So one shot in the big toe might take them down. Riley gonna play this oh, one safe. Now. You know the coming. Yeah, this is gonna be difficult. Can he find it? Gets one, not able to get the second as Veggie Clapper gonna secure the round. That's pretty convincing for me. I mean, Jolly Rory with a great, great flank right there. That really secured the round once he spotted three members and was able to take out two of them. And you're starting to see that that economy kind of show up here for, for Rocky Esports with Bard having to go with that stinger 
in order to save enough money so that they can reliably get themselves a rifle in the next round. Absolutely. And, you know, we talked about agent meta in the beginning of this the segment, in mean, the beginning of this game, and one of the things we said is, I've said, wouldn't be shocked if we Take see the flight. jet, but jet is really super, super effective when they're able to get an operator. We haven't seen Bard able to do that as Veggie Clapper is just peeking everything with that run it back and able to take one out. Blue Frog yeah. takes down Riley and it's, I hate to say it, sounding like a broken record. USD Coyotes just steamrolling right now. Flashing teammates, doesn't matter. Looking for frags, they're hunting down Uniter. They're not holding on to this weapon. Yeah, they got those first two kills, and there was there was a red flare sent off through the teleporter, Last and everyone was like, "Ooh, I'd like one of those." Absolutely, they're farming ulti orbs at this point. They're going for those weekly challenges. I think it's what is it, 50 ultimates in a uh, at the end of the week, and you get the 12,000 XP. That's what it looks like. USD Coyotes are doing right now. Yeah, coming into this next next matchup, if you're Rocky Esports, you you've tried a, a few different things. Granted, you, you know you want to see him throw that fakey into the mix, but what else is ha is going on here? The one v ones just don't seem to be connecting. Standing ahead. Yeah, and as much as I hate to say it's a mechanical difference because all these players are super talented. I mean, look at that shot from Riley just taking out Atlas. I think it's a bit of a disconnect with the players right now. You know. I don't know if their comms are flowing super heavily. Anytime you see a score get too crazy and too out of hand, you start to get a bit down on yourselves and take challenges like that because you don't challenge a Viper in this in the Viper's pit. I mean, so, I mean, it, there may be something going on with a bit of an ego, but I hate to say that. I give Rocky Esports the benefit of the doubt. Everybody has those games. It's an off day. You go to GG, go to the next round, and try and forget about it. Maybe they're stronger on the defensive side. That could certainly be the case. Anything's possible in Valorant. You can see the fear that Red Frog has instilled into Rocky Esports with how many shots are being expended just to try and clear out its traps. But now he's a little bit on the roast, backing out around the corner. But no, Blaze! Getting caught up once again. You're gonna see the hunt is on as they all look to elbow, but from the other side, Rory gonna be killing it. Look at the left while the right does the business. USD Coyote is gonna be putting 11 down now. Rocky Esports staring up at a pretty big mountain to climb. It certainly was, and what a what a round from Rory. Every, like you said, everyone's so worried about uh, about Red Frog over that. there that they completely forgot that Rory was in the server and said, hey, anything he can do, I can do slightly better. So props to them, and that's a convincing first half. I know we said it's going to be difficult. It's certainly possible for Rocky Esports to come back, but they have to start start hitting shots and hitting shots quickly. This is going to be, like you said, an uphill battle, but certainly possible. Blue Frog, five and eight, the lone member going negative on the side of USD Coyotes. It's got to be somebody. It happens to the best of us, but that Viper play has been fantastic. We've seen a couple of uh, Viper screens come out that have been beautiful. We saw the Snake Pit used on the A site to lock it down last round. So very well done. I will commend you, my fellow Viper main. And look at this beautiful overhead shot. As we get the Vipers while bottom left of your screen, that's going to cut off A site and cut off the players in Lamps. Full send. Four players on B. It looks like USD Coyotes are going to hit that go button as soon as Viper throws out this smoke. Yeah, the Red aggression the from USD out. expected 100%. After a really strong defense, and you can see Red Frog trying to pop a couple of shots, but opening up enough space to get Atlas onto the point. But once again, not checking angles is the bane of the attacking team. Riley able to hide away in this cubby and find themselves a quick kill. Make that two. Red Frog now out of the equation. Rocky Esports on the defense in the pistol round are shining a bit brighter. Oh, Ooh, Riley finding another one on Rory. That was through the smoke and through the wall, if I'm not mistaken. What a shot that was from Riley as some more spam, spam comes through for Veggie Clapper. It looks like Blue Frog, though, took the teleporter and is going to get the spike down, but not able to get away from sight. That's going to be an easy defuse. And Rocky Esports doing what they have to do. Oh, stop it, Veggie. Stop it, Veggie Clapper. I know it's not going to win the round, but that's a great consolation prize. Hey, just check your corners next time, boys. I'm, I'm here. Stop it, Veggie. Did he really what? hit that? 
style. Yes. He hit those, right? Oh uh, my! Yeah, Making I'm, them what? pay. Definitely Veggie, take uh, a bow, put his young fella. In the race for top of the leaderboard. Hey. Absolutely fantastic it, to know, see like, from USD. It certainly is. I, they knew the round was over. Veggie Clapper did, but gonna still make them pay economically. I mean, look at the buy on Tan, who was one of those players who fell, not able to get the shields with that stinger, but. I'll take the round win if you're the side of Rocky Esports. Give them all the frags you want. As long as that round's on the board, we will take those. So, USD Coyote's looking to do something similar again. Push this B site. The toxic screen went up on A, so it gives them a little bit of time. Rocky Esports not too sure where these players are. It doesn't look like they've peeked too close into A, but Riley's got the Sheriff looking to do some work. Team Unidurp here on the elbow with the Stinger. Gonna get tracked down. And with two members down for Rocky Esports, USD are gonna be able to get the plant off and Blaze. Getting speckled from the elbow, gonna be pushing hard after the paint can comes out. Isn't able to get away from the Roomba, however, so the Boom Bot's gonna find the kill. The rest of Rocky Esports now showing up to the point. That Bucky, that Jet, to a very dangerous combination. Bard, able to find the first pick. Looking for the Phoenix now around the corner. Isn't able to hit the long range shot. Last player standing. Oh, Veggie, what Veggie Clapper, Clapper just comes flying out of nowhere in every round, I feel like. Match point. Just, you're looking at somebody else in Veggie Clapper there to stab you in the back. Unbelievable play from Veggie Clapper. And with that, you know, I, I, talk, I talk a little bit about the economy going on a run, but when you hit this third round and you're not able um to to confidently buy out your your full armor rifle loadout it, it can really throw a kink into the mix later on in the works especially when you know it's final round you, you're running the, you've got to run a couple of light armors you're running the bulldog rocky esports right now need to make sure that they're keeping things together on this defense of blue frog able to start things off on the attack blaze trying to even it out and is able to take atlas out of the fight so that's going to put them up they know the attack is on A, the rotation for Rocky is coming through, but a lot of members now back in that Heaven hallway. If USD finds that out, they have the heroes to deny that re-entry. Yeah, and the side of Rocky Esports is completely cut off from sight. They know where they are. You saw the shots getting spammed towards Riley. They know all three players are back there. This is looking impossible for Rocky Esports. No not many abilities left. Riley used both leers. I don't know if Killjoy has either the Molly available or the Alarm Bot, but it's not going to do any good when Red Frog knows exactly where you are. 3v2. Unidurp can't take out Rory and Riley. The lone player standing. Going to dismiss into the corner. Not enough time to defuse the spike. And folks, map number one will go to the USD Coyotes with a score of 13-2. Take a bow, USD. That was that was some clinical Valorant being played right there. It's it's a vast improvement um, from last week. I mean, barely able to pick up, uh, only pick up seven or six maps um, in their in their entire matchup last week, and they're coming in this week strong with that thirteen and two, and, and just man, Red Frog, Rory, and Veggie Clapper are just these bursts of talent that just at times where. Like, you know, it's quiet, and then you look up in the kill feed and half the team's dead. Absolutely. And that whole first half when USD was defending, you had to look out for Red Frog. Holding down that elbow position, they had the trap wires, had the cypher cam in the sky. It looked almost like he was quarterbacking the entire thing, calling the shots, and also finding the frag. So, Red Frog, take a bow. That was one heck of a map. But again, Jolly Rory and Veggie Clap were able to answer and keep that momentum going with the team. 16 6, 16 5. Blue Frog, you, you pulled out the Viper, so I appreciate that, but you didn't make us look super great on 6, 9, and 3, so I'll let it slide for now, but Riley, four first bloods is huge. You're on that duelist, you want to create space for your team. You're able to find four first bloods, but your team couldn't capitalize. That's something that we have to we have to see Rocky Mountain do going forward. Anytime you're able to get that man advantage, you have to make the other team pay. That's the name of the game is punish, punish, punish. And Rocky Mountain unable to do that in map number one. But I believe we're going to go to a quick break, Steidl. And then we're coming right back with map number two, if I'm not mistaken.
yeah, it's going to be Bind. Or no, sorry, Ascent is going to be our next map, which I'm super excited for. Let's see if we get any cheeky Odin wall bangs. Maybe a Yoru, who knows? We'll see you guys. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Pepper was always mm -hmm. an elbow. <laughs> What's up, guys? We are back. And uh, we're going to give you a little bit of a breakdown of, of map one before we get our action going. But Rocky Esports, you know, like you said, in the name, bit of a rocky time on that first map. USD Coyotes were able to fairly confidently, aggressively, and fluidly grab that 13-2. They certainly were. We had Red Frog picking up, I believe, in the first eight rounds, Red Frog had three 4Ks, which is absolutely insane. The Cypher play was phenomenal. The nerd cams, as I like to call them, high in the sky, looking like a jib camera, just caught everything. As soon as Rocky Mountain started to make a move, somebody from the side of University of South Dakota was there. The Coyotes were hunting in packs, and they were vicious. We saw flanks. We saw lurks. It was, like you said in the break, Steidl, it was textbook Valorant. They weren't doing anything crazy. They weren't doing anything super different. It was just Valorant. It was vanilla. Yeah, and, and, and from Rocky Esports, it didn't all look bad. The, the score line definitely does give you the impression of that. But, but you know, a lot of their pushes were well put together. They were patient. They worked on the information they gathered. I just coming into this next map, you said this a little bit earlier. You want to see them take some risks. I want to see them retain some information. We saw a couple of rounds where a lot of the members from USD didn't move where they were positioned, and those corners still didn't get checked. They didn't get flushed out. And because of that, the retakes for USD were, like you said, textbook. So from Rocky, coming into this next map, just, you know, if you go into the first thing, you see the Cypher, you know, over here in a very specific position. If he's there three times in a row, check the corner. <laughs> Shit is going to be there a fourth time. Boom bot. Do something to, to, like, scare him out of that corner or just figure out if they're still there. Um, and and just, just that change alone, I think their pushes will get a little bit smoother. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. I think it's very key for them to find those positions where the players are feeling comfortable for the side of USD. And I mean, another place you can look to find positions or even find scrims is the CF1 public discord. Steidl, I know you're in it. I'm in it. It's a grand old time. Yes, I am. Folks, feel free to join our community discord looking for scrims, games, even if you just need someone to duo with in silver. I'm there all by my lonesome. I need some help. So please, please come join I'll us get up there to soon. get the invite. I, I, I'm with it, Steidl. We can carry you to silver. That's no problem. But to, to join the community Discord, make sure you type exclamation point Discord in the chat. It's a good time. We have a lot of the players from this community in the Discord. And again, even if you're just a fan, you're just watching, you want to interact with some of these folks, come on in, hang out. It's a good time. It's a, it's a good vibes. Right, Steidl? Yeah, and it's also a great place to keep up with all of the announcements and the goings-ons here at CF1. So if you want to make sure that you never miss a match, make sure that you're doing a couple of things. Not only get in the Discord, but follow and subscribe to the channel. Get yourself that CF1 emote. It's pretty dope. I just got one. Thank you, CF1 president in chat very much for, for doing so. Happy to have that emote. But yeah, make sure that you're getting over the Discord because it also has the emote. And it's where I am. You can tag me. You can talk to me. We can have conversations. I know nobody probably wants to talk to me, but it's it's okay. We'll just play. I'll mute myself. <laughs> Steidl, I'll talk to you. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe CF1 is having an emote contest on Twitter. So if you are not a follower of CF1s on Twitter, make sure you go to CF1 Esports. Submit something you want to see as an emote in chat, and maybe it gets chosen. If you want to put my lovely face on a pog champ, I'm pretty sure I submitted that one today. I might just have to, to email it, but it's certainly... The, the contest is on. It's running. We want your submissions. Anything goes, really. I mean, I know it's kind of dangerous to say because we might see some things, but anything goes, Dido. <laughs> well, you know what? Anything goes is kind of the uh, theme of the day here on the channel. We were talking a bit about what we expect out of USD on their attack as we come into Ascent. And based off of the relative freedom that Rocky Esports allowed USD on our first map. I expect a lot of aggression and look at the hero lineup for USD. That is a pretty, pretty harsh frag heavy loadout as far as heroes go. Yeah, USD running triple duelist. They are looking to go fast and go hard. I mean, anytime you see Reyna raise Phoenix, I'm expecting 
uh, Phoenix Curveball into Rain Alir, and then just have Ray's Blast Pack somewhere. But when Bard does that to Veggie, I don't know what to expect anymore. Quickly answered back by Rory, able to find the frag. Still 4v4, still plenty of utility to work with for both of these teams. One player is going to be hitting behind the green box. Doesn't get spotted, so it looks like there's still one. That's going to be Riley taken out by the Reina counterpart. Excuse me, counterpart. Enemy Spike mind. goes down, and that's a huge Spike recon planted. drone able to spot all four members oh. from Tan. The dart. Oh. Does that get out? Gets out, tags one, but Blue Frog tags ahead of Tan. This is an uphill battle. And that here. comes down to just, you know, you can't put yourself out in the open like that. You know they're on point. Now USD with four members to protect their plant. Blaze is going to have to pull off a big play here, looking long, looking over towards the window. But from trees, Atlas is able to find the pick. Frenzy from afar isn't going to get much done, Uni. You got to make sure that you're getting that recoil control in. But uh, it's a, it's a bit, of, bit of bringing a knife to a gunfight there at the very end. Yeah, that Frenzy, It's we've seen it do some crazy things, but that shot... That's going to be a difficult one. Like you said, you got to control that spray. And from that distance, it's not very easy. So we'll see the Stinger Force Buy come in on the side of Rocky Esports. Going to get some credits down and hopefully make USD pay as it doesn't look like they're going to go for too much of a crazy investment. We're going to see one upgrade <laughs> pistol on Veggie Clapper, light shields across the board, Atlas and Bard going to run heavy shields. So I'm looking at Bard this round on catwalk with heavy shields and the Bucky to go to work. If he can get a couple of opening frags like last time, fall back and not take another fight, wait for his teammates to really come around. That's what I want to see. We talked about it last uh, in the last map, four first bloods on the side of USD Coyotes. They only had two round wins, so we need to see them convert a bit more. You can see the call going out now to come to mid is a little bit of information gathered by Veggie. He cites two in mid. They know they've got at least another one over there on B. They need to be careful. Approaching the Bucky now. Both going to walk in and get it out of the smoke like ships passing in the night. Bard White able to find the kill still as the trade goes through. USD going to be up one man. Blaze now with an aggressive push into mid as the bomb goes down the rotation from Rocky no. Esports. They left everybody in mid, pulled everybody from A. Yeah, that's huge. Blaze takes one, but Veggie Clapper immediately gets that trade back. Has an remaining. idea. This is a 1v1 now. It's certainly possible. Where is the Reina is the name of the game. You've heard of where is Waldo. This is the remix, folks. Atlas versus Unidurp. Unidurp versus Atlas. Gonna get spotted out and tap the spike. Atlas, no. stop it. Stop. That's just rude. Shift, enter. In theory, I'm what sorry. a play. <laughs> but Unidurp like, you know, Unidurp. nothing wrong. Yeah. Good job setting up that turret to make sure that they could draw fire from... Uh, from Atlas, but Atlas was just ready for that peak. Yeah, the, the ghost from Atlas was clean. It was precise. Didn't get the headshot in the end, but hey, three body shots. We take that and look at that start. We saw it last last map from Red Frog. Atlas going ballistic this round. Five and zero oh, yet to die. Ego challenge and Riley makes them pay. So finally gonna get that first death on the board and to get a weapon in the hands of Riley. Does a little bit of damage on that oh. drive-by as well. Black pack. Sky high. Riley takes down another one. And they keep this going. Looks like Blue Frog's going to be able to pick up the kill onto Riley. After a great pay play, listening for that satchel, no one to look up. And now we're seeing Rocky Esports. They're they're pretty confident about this full committal. That Once they get a little spike. bit of information about a push, and it's not proving to be a beneficial thing. Rotation now going to be. And it's going to take a little bit of time for Rocky Esports to get there, but Red Frog and the rest of USD should be able to get themselves into pretty good position. And they're going to have that camera to figure out where everybody is. Clap around the right and back, pushes through, trying to get a pick through the smoke, but not able to find any kills. Doesn't have much longer on that ultimate, so just kind of peppering things to see if he can't find a kill as the bomb goes down on point. Red Frog now in prime position with a couple of key cypher cages to completely cut off the retake. 
from Rocky Esports. You can see the turret off to the left for just a little bit as Red Frog rates for the pick, but now pushed on Blaze. Able to find that Rocky. Four people up. It's all up to Veggie Clapper for USD to keep this alive and put it to a 3-0. Last player standing. Veggie Clapper takes down Uniturp. It's a 1v1. Blaze, I don't think you have the time. He's got to find this frag quickly. But Blue Frog takes him out. Finds the 3k on the round. Wall bang, headshot, Blue Frog. We take those. And I want to compliment what Rocky Esports did right there. They played that so well. Unfortunately, not able to find the round. But they knew the rotation was coming in. They held that A site, sent everyone there once there was a couple of picks down that site. No one pushed through from the side of USD Coyote. So they said, you know what? We're going to play off our gut instinct, rotate everyone back, and play safe, which they did on that initial retake, right? Spike went down for the Coyotes. And they waited. They bought themselves a couple seconds. They waited for their teammates. It's a lot easier to retake as four than to try to hold as one. It's something I preach time and time again. Wait for your teammates and make those those trades. But five players there on this new round get spotted out in middle. USD just running it down. It looks like a game of ARAM right now. Yeah, they're kind of banking on Rocky, hoping it's an A push as the bomb. Moves over towards B. Action in the middle, continuing as Blaze finds the first kill. Tan trying to find something through the wall as the shots are returned. Atlas able to find the rotating Blaze. Not looking the right way. Oh, able to jump and kind of squiggle through a couple of bullets there as Tan takes them out finally and evens up body count a little bit. Putting it down now, and there's the Rocky Esports we've been waiting for as they finally start to. And it put a little bit of fire into the rise of a red frog. He's not willing to take no for an answer with all the frags he can get. Yeah, unfortunate bit of a miscue there, miss but there. it's just gonna be a 30 yeah, seconds. It's gonna left. be a recall. Go back to the point, cover the bomb, wait for that timer to go out. Absolutely, especially when we have an operator. You really just want to sit back. Cypher cam's gonna go up, not spot anyone. I mean, if you're the side of USD, you have the you have the money, might as well go for it. If you can take the operator out of the hands of Riley right now, that's a disaster, and so is that! Red Frog, are you kidding me? Things went from bad to worse right there. I'm I don't even know what shit. to say. <laughs> I am, I, I'm, I'm, I'm borderline speechless myself. I mean, it really looked like Rocky Esports had it in the bag. It... He came through the predictable angle, but just those shots were so on point, there wasn't time to do anything. Yeah, and I again, I want to give Riley the benefit of the doubt, but you missed two sitters the right there. I mean, begins. you hard scope in, you know the angle he's coming from, just not able to get those timings. Bladestorm going to get popped here from Bard. Right in front, not able to find one. That's an interesting position, but able to get one with the stinger. That gun goes burr all day long. Blue Frog takes Riley down with the Molotov, question mark ping, and we see the run it back get popped. So USD Coyotes, it almost looks like this is Veggie Clapper is, what, second run it back in as many rounds, I feel like? Yeah. And by the way, that, that Molly kill, it was, it, was a, it was a lined up Molly shot into the air that landed inside the smoke that was just outside of trees that Riley was sitting in. That's how that happened. The brain on these players. Blue Frog showing us the lineups. I want to see the salsa dance that Veggie Clapper just did. I mean, look at this first shot, and then look at this next one. The strafe right here has the curveball out. Little shimmy, shimmy, yeah, shimmy, yeah. Here we go. As Veggie Clapper just absolutely blasted Tan into next week. <clears throat> that was gorgeous. And, you know... This is this is starting to get away from Rocky Esports once again. You're starting to see the economies take a hit. You know they're they're opting for those operators, but really, really a big gamble because the payoff has just not been there. Absolutely, and it's a heavy investment. That operator is five thousand credits. I mean. It looks like, if I'm not mistaken, Riley went glass cannon op, so no shields. You have to hit those shots if you're going to go no shield operator. I mean, it's just inexcusable. But the other question is, I feel like Bard should be 
on the operator as well. You can take the shot and immediately and dash out. Whereas Riley, if he misses that shot, he's they're vulnerable. I mean, they can go any direction. But as I say that, Riley able to find the first operator frag of this match. Red Frog looking to retrieve the spike. 5v2, but, you know, right with here. USD Coyotes playing the way they are, anything is possible. Blaze on about 20 One HP, so remaining. still in the mix, but Bard finds Red Frog, who's the player left. That's going to be Rory. Jala Rory's going to have to get something magical here because they know exactly where they are. Rocky Esports playing safe, playing patient, left. and they have spiked down, which is the most important thing. So don't need to peek. I expect Rory to save here or at least try to get the operator out of the hands of Rocky Esports. Doesn't look it looks like Rory's gonna go for the free pick here. Oh trying to get the pick onto the jet but doesn't see them hiding behind the boxes. Knows they're there though. Seconds left. Gonna be able to take that down move on to A. They're not gonna look for the for the spike but a couple of picks. We'll try and look for those. Yeah, get a little exit damage down there for, for Rory. And beautiful crosshair placement. I mean, that's just knowing the character models at this point. The game's been out almost a year now, which is crazy to me. So they've been putting the time in. They know where those heads are. And at that point, just clicking heads, right? Isn't that what Trouty says? You see head, you click head, you win game. So props to them. Rocky Esports, though, gets their first round on the board. I don't want to say it was because of that operator. I think it was because of the coordination that that team just played with. They saw one. They saw all five members go down middle, and they they collapsed. Really, they brought players in from B site, from A site, and then from market area. So very well done. Riley gets immediately leered off of that angle, and that's going to buy a lot of space for USD Coyotes. Everyone talks about when you're a duelist, you want to get a lot of frags. But to, what I'll say for that point is you want to create a lot of space. So curveball goes out, just barely misses one. Riley finds one there, though. Able to, can they find the second one? Molotov's going to go out, try to push him off of sight. Just barely misses his toesies. Hank oh, Kane goes out, not able to find Blue Frog as Blue Frog takes down Riley. 4v3 now for Rocky Esports. Spike's not down just yet. They're going to have to commit to this, and they are Ooh, blasted. Bard the remaining. White takes down Blue Frog. Bard the White takes down Atlas. That's beautiful play right there from the Jet. Absolutely beautiful, and you're seeing this rotation from Red Frog, and mind you, Red Frog's still alive. Anything is possible. We're going to have to be very, very gingerly pushed here. Bit of a sticky situation, if you will. Red Frog able to avoid left. getting taken out by that Please operator. But will be able to advance onto the point. Shots through the cage are going to find a little bit of purchase, but not the full kill. And now they know exactly where he is. It's just a matter of time. He's, he finds one and gets himself a little bit of extra money in his back pocket. And Steidl, I want to point out the thing that Rocky Mountain is doing very well right now is trading. I mean, look at the angles that they're taking these fights. It's not like there's one person watching this angle. We saw it with that last kill, right? Tan gets taken out, but Uniderp immediately there to trade. So very well done. And when you have this num the numbers advantage, you can do things like that. So I want to see them continue that. Looking at their economy, it's pretty well bolstered. 7,600 credits on Blaze, 6,300 on Tan. So they have the money to need to keep this bank rolling and keep it snowballing. Because if USD gets going, we've seen it. We saw it last match. It can be disastrous. Riley, back very, on very though. gutsy positioning. I know oh, exactly and it pays off for the trade, but they're going to give the op to Red Frog. Now with a bit of a flash, Tan, and a bit of a bit of a bind, if you will. Red Frog able to find one. Blaze answering back now in a 3v3 Rocky Esports. Going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Back at, of that middle position has been cleared, but not... That angle, Blue Frog, not able to find that kill. Red Frog coming back from the back of spawn, but it looks like looks like they know where he is. Enemy remaining. The teleport, however, he's going to hear it out. The finds the kill. He'd be able to pick up the bomb, rotate it over to A, plant that. Or is he going to go for the shark kill over on to B, make sure he can close things out? Moving quietly. Looks like the rotation bait possibly going to work. No, don't Stratal. leave. Look at the mini map. Tan, go back. No. Tan, go back. Oh, man, Tan. 
biting pretty hard right now at the bait as they get over to mid, but not really sure. Now they're starting to second guess. Checking every single corner as the plant goes down on on to B. They'll hear that plant, but he's going to have time to set up all his traps and, and his camera. And that is not the kind of situation that you want to be walking into as a half-health Sova up against one of the kill leaders from USD Coyotes. Go, go, Gadget Camera went out for Red Frog. He has an idea as to where Tan's coming from, but Tan's not expecting this angle. There's no way. You see him spamming the back sight. Red Frog gets the 4K and gets the clutch. Gives us a little thumbs up on stream. We appreciate that, Red Frog. But, I mean, Tan did the right thing. Traditionally, in that situation, you want to rotate. You expect the other player to rotate in the 1v1, but Red Frog... Cypher's got a hat for a reason. It's to contain that massive brain of theirs. I mean, it's just it's just Cypher things, right, Steidl? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's just, it's, just, it's just Cypher things. That was totally the abilities of uh, the character that carried Red Frog through that fight. I mean, <laughs> I talked, I touched on it briefly uh, when it came down to the psyche uh, of what it feels like to, to kind of have the other team start to snowball you. <laughs> But the mental game is just as important, and I talk about that a lot, and you see, you see that being played really, really well by Red Frog when it comes You're down to dead. these situations, whether it's just being patient and waiting or blowing on to the point as quickly as possible and, and using that kind of blunt force trauma attack. And look at this, Veggie Clap! Wow! Find that two on that, run it back. Ooh, nice shot from Riley onto Rory. I'll take it. We get those little ones. Is Red Frog going to pick it up? No, but it looks like the Blue Frog did. And here we go. This is the run it back that Veggie Clapper was able to find the Killjoy. Great shot here. And then finds another one on an unsuspecting Omen. Veggie Clapper and USD have done something so well, and that's changing the pace that they go at, right? We've seen mm -hmm. them rush onto sites like they just did with that run it back from Veggie Clapper. We've seen them stay patient, play smart, play for picks. They're really showing off everything that they can do, and it's it's working extremely well for them right now. And it's not something I expect them to be switching up. Now that they've gotten the the aggressive game started, you know their their confidence is still there. It's built from that first map. And they're going to use that to push aggressively, and Riley has a really good position to take out a lot of members of USD if they just stayed alive. Jyler Roy, however, checking that corner from a bit of an odd angle. And now in mid, Rocky Esports, two people left. He's got their jet on A and their omen down in mid now. And it's up to Bard to get some big plays with the knives. It's knives out, ladies and gentlemen. Going to go ahead and put them away, though. Realizes they're probably going to come into contact with more than just a single member of USD at a time. But a 2v1 definitely winnable. It certainly is. And Bard the White trying to do their best. Daniel Craig impression. Got the knives out looking for the killers. Can they find them? They know. They have to know there's a player in Cubby. Cybercam not able to take one. Bard takes out Jawler. Gets the Tailwind back. So this is certainly doable now. Going to updraft Tailwind onto site. Red Frog, does he have a clue? Hasn't heard the spike get tapped yet. The spike is in prime position. Can they clutch up? Bard the white taps. Patience. Oh no! Checks the wrong I mean, corner. It's it, it's a toss up. It's a 50-50. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one right there. Red Frog, extreme patience. Not something you see every day. Here's the tap. And, you know, this isn't professional Valorant. He expects a fake. If this was pro Valorant, you know the age-old adage, pros don't fake. But on this day, Bard the White did. So, unfortunate. Able to bring it down, though, into the into the 1v1. So, found two frags. Did a little bit of economic damage, but not enough. Because that economy on the side of USD Coyotes, we still see five Vandals in full shield. There it is. Let's go, Rocky. You almost got it. I want to see that every round. The cheeky omen wall banger on B is one of my favorite things about this map. However, not going to bring anything to fruition to Rocky Esports. <laughs> so now the battlefield in mid seems to be 
set, the scene, I should say, has been set. A couple of aggressive positions from Rocky Esports. They're going to be sending a couple members from B over towards that back mid area towards their spawn. And what a camera to make sure there's nobody on those cheeky angles. Bard, able to pick up one, looking for the second, isn't able to find it. The trade comes through. Atlas, able to put them through one for one as they get paranoid. Has to take, get, put themselves back into this W here. Back out to Meta's Riley, one finding one with the Spectre. And now, Rocky Esports, able to take a round, only losing one member. Best round we've seen yet. Can they keep Last that momentum going? The switch. Yeah, and if they can, if Rocky Esports can take four going into halftime, it's certainly not the greatest score line in 8-4 half, but we'll take it. It's much better than what they got last map. I believe last map at half, it was 13, or excuse me, it was, what, 10-1? 11-1, if I'm not mistaken? Yes, 11-1. 11-1, so, hey, we'll take it. They've already run more rounds this map than they did last, so the little victories is what you have to look for, and it looks like they have a change on the operator. Blaze going to be running the op as opposed to... Uh, excuse me. As opposed to Riley. Riley, so interesting choice here. Can the operator go to work? Not just yet, because Atlas goes to work. Finds one, finds two. Riley goes down. Blaze still surging for a frag on that. I mean, look at the minimap. You have four players Spike for planted. USD Coyotes on Spike on site. Spike gets planted, and Red, Fo Red Frog is on the lurk. Just waiting for something to pop off middle. But the frags are coming through fast and furious. Little little Tokyo Drift here and there, maybe, for the side of Rocky Esports. And they get the defuse. I'm here for it. Red Frog on that lurk finds one from the shadows, not able to find anything. Last round, so you have to go for it. Blaze Ooh. takes down one player. 2v1. Spikes taking Stay down. Inside. Not much time left. One player is super low. I don't think Blaze is going to have the time to do this one. He's going to have to find a crazy shot here on the Red Frog. Gets it, but not enough time for the spike that will go off. So, a 9-3 half for the side of the USD Coyotes, and they will move on to the defensive side. Sides. Now, Steidl, I don't know about you, but in my opinion, the, the defensive side is semi... It's very close, but it's somewhat easier on this map. What do you think? This map is, is a map that I like to say is kind of generated for for the retake and what i mean by that is is that if you put two people on b you can do a very or sorry three people on b you can do a very good job of completely locking down any sort of entry onto that point forcing people over to a uh where you can play two people and if a gets taken it's one of the few points in valorant va sorry valorant in valorant that in my opinion is perfect for a retake there's a lot of interesting ways to get yourself onto the point. Heaven has a lot of open space to work with if you're using smokes in a creative way. So it allows you to kind of just give up the point and then come back full strength. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. Like we said last map, it's easier to retake as five than to hold as two or three. So we want to see the patience come out. We see the Frenzy meta in full effect. Rocky Esports, I believe they're going to be rocking with three of them. Jolly Rory, did he spot one there? Oh, oh he hears it. He's not an armadillo. Oh, shot's just a little shy of the head there for Rory. Yeah, did a bit of damage on the two players, though, as Bard and Tan both are going to be below, 20, uh, below 50 HP, so certainly winnable. Blaze got has a smoke, so this execute could come quickly. Smokes off CT. Riley takes down Veggie Clapper, makes this one a 5v3. Last player Can he find Rocky one? Esports. No. It's convincing putting looking. Together. Yeah, putting together a really good attack here. And and I think the, the key thing that you talked about, uh, what they were doing on, on their defense is patience. They're taking it slow, and, and not just like, we're, we're not going to push the point immediately, but they're taking their time. That, that's what I mean to put. They're taking their time, they're actually using the information that they're being given, and you're seeing it on the scoreboard now. And I think that's, that's the key, right? Because a lot of times we'll see these teams get information, and we'll see them have an inkling, or you look at the minimap, you see a shot gets popped off, you see that little icon appear, 
and you don't do anything with that, right? You can you say, oh, okay, I got an idea of where they are, but I don't know exactly. But it tells you on the mini map, you know where they are. So we really need to see teams capitalize on this. As we say that, though, this is the type of thing that we were looking for in map one, the change of pace. Rocky Esports just storms onto site, gets a couple trades here, a couple trades there. 4v3, they have the man advantage, and the spike's getting planted. Spike planted. Standing. Riley goes to work with the Stinger. Red Frog makes them pay. So, 1v4. If they can pick up the Stinger, they can do some serious damage. They know where Red Frog is. Heard the reload. Cypher Cam going to go out. Spots one player. Can't find the second. Cypher Cam gets shot down. Red Frog, you have to have an idea, young fella. Show me something here. Knows there's a player back sight. Not gonna check just yet. Spots one. Spots two. Right click on the classic. Spots three. Red Frog. Did he just win that? Is there enough time? I think there is. Steidl. Red Frog does no wrong in clutch situations. Change my mind. Mute I mean, buttons are fun, aren't they? I think he's absolutely <laughs> fantastic. He can't do any wrong. You know, he literally, he took my speech away. I couldn't talk. I mean, I don't blame you. Look at that. You have four, you have three players lined up right there. And Red Frog, just doing Red Frog things, getting bouncy, and takes it over. So we see ourselves into round number 15. USD Coyotes in a comfortable 10-4 lead. Can Red Frog get something going? They trust him enough to deal with... They trust him enough to deal with all five members on site. This is not something you see every day. Cypher holds A by themselves. Only the Spectre in hand against a bunch of Vandals and some Spectres itself, if I'm not mistaken. Brimstone Smoke's gonna slow the pace down. And what an interesting spot from Rory. Oh, huh. please. If Rocky Esports rotates through spawn they are going to get absolutely destroyed please don't go there rocky please don't oh no oh no oh no speckling some shots over in the mid but they've sent at least one member to rotate through spawn but it doesn't look like the killjoy they got, got i think they may have seen the front of the gun pointing out or something but not going to decide to do that you see the rotation from usd now going over towards mid Getting called back though. Riley pushes on to point for Rocky Esports. Nobody knows that Red Frog's there. He's able to find one, looking for the second, able to find it with the help of Atlas. And that's gonna be two men, too bad, but Tan coming in with a 1v3, able to find two members, but is not watching his back. No one there to check his six. And with 11 and four, only two rounds away, USD Coyotes are looking to put their record to a 1 1. Yeah, and Rory, we, we highlighted that spot that he was in on the Lurk earlier. Doesn't come in with the players from Rocky going through spawn, but he helps his teammate out, gets the final frag, and this is just clinical, clinical Valorant. Red Frog, 22-8-1. I mean, if you're the enemy team, that's the only player I'm looking at. I'm like, hey, if we can get a frag onto Red Frog... I'm totally fine. Like, I have the utmost confidence in winning the rounds, but when Jolly Rory does stuff like that, gonna do some decent damage with the pain shells as well. It's difficult. So Riley brings us back to a 4v4. <laughs> Lear comes out from Reyna. And another Beautiful trade, technique so still on a 3v3. As well. It certainly was. Look at the health bar on Tan, though. That's what? A sliver, half an HP, if that? And Veggie Clapper knows that makes him pay. Check. That Discord was, he's absolute, has to be. I don't know how I didn't get the frag. Curveball's going out. One They've committed to this B site now. Atlas takes down Uniderp and a hope and a prayer. Riley, you oh, got you, Riley. both. Spots the shoulder. Three bullets left in the magazine. It's gonna have to be right clicks from here on out. And Atlas says right click uninstall. I find this frag and we are match on point. match and series point for USD Coyotes. You know, I don't think I need to say it. This is a big round for Rocky Esports. I mean, well, every round from here on out is going to be a big round for Rocky Esports. There's still a chance for them to bring this back. And you know what? I'm in their corner. 
they, they've had they've had good pushes. We're starting to see those pieces of the puzzle falling into place for Rocky Esports. The consistency just needs to to get ironed out. They weren't ready for the aggressive push last time, and they weren't ready for it this time. Atlas picking up two at the beginning of the round. As Tan decides to continue to move on towards B, the rest of the USD Coyotes now in rotation. The hunt is on. They know that they've got that man advantage, and they know exactly where the members of Rocky Esports are. Yeah, and Atlas looks like they have a paper due at midnight because just flying in to that B spawn, get, or excuse me, into that B site, gets the frag. Rory takes out Tan. That's going to be the GGs in all chat as USD Coyotes take down Rocky Esports with a score of 13 to 4, 2 0 in map count from each title. That's clean, clinical. It's precise, man. Yeah, we talked at the beginning of the, at the top of the matchup about how this was a fight for redemption. It was two teams that didn't really get to show their stuff last week going up against a, a couple of teams that were really, really prepared for that first week and USD bouncing back strong. Uh, still a little bit of, of, of playmaking and VOD watching to go for, for Rocky Mountain College, but you know, <clears throat> They're, they're, they showed better play this week than they did last week. And as long as you can keep doing that, it's bound to get better. But I'm glad to see that we had the matchup that we did. And I'm really, really excited that I got to witness Red Frog. I say witness because it was an event. Red Frog put on an absolute clinic. Both maps dropping at least 20 kills. Beautiful play. And like you said, Rocky Mountain Esports, nothing to hold your to hang your head on. You know, you did more this week than you did last week. So any progress is better than no progress. Get back into the lab, get back together, and try to dissect what happened in that match. A couple key takeaways that we wanted to see was a change of pace, right? We've seen them go fast. We didn't really see them get too slow. It happened on occasion, but we really want to see more of that mix up. Also, Bring something different to the table during an agent select. We see a traditional two duelists, two initiators, and a control. Uh, excuse me, one initiator, one controller, and a sentinel. Can you run the three duelist comps? I mean, look at Riley, Blaze, and Bard. Can you run Blaze on, you know, the Yoru? Bring out something like that, and then go with that pocket pick. Steidl, you talked about it at the top of the broadcast. Icebox. If they can lock down Icebox as a map, no one's going to want to play them there. That's going to be something that they can hold over and say, we're the Icebox Kings. We have something that no one else does. And I think that's their, that's the ace in the hole for this Rocky Mountain side. Yeah, you talked about how Icebox was a map where, you know, it's it still hasn't been figured out. So get I'm, t I'm talking to every team out there right now, not just, <laughs> not just, not just Rocky Esports. Go over to Icebox, figure yourself, figure yourself out some set plays, and bring it into the competition. I'm telling you, no one's going to be prepared for it. So I, I just think that would be an absolutely amazing thing to see. <clears throat> However, I do think that's going to be that's going to be it for our matchup. We are going to have an interview coming up with one of the members um, of our winning team of USD. But that'll be it for us right now as we go to a quick break. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We want to get you an insight into that USD team and see what's changed from week to week. Thank you. 
Okay. Yeah. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Have we got a treat for you? We've got Veggie Clapper here from Coyote Esports. How are you doing, Veggie? I'm good. How are you guys? Good, good. We're doing Thanks fantastic after that uh that show you guys just put on. I did want to ask you one quick question before I hand it over to Speezy. But sure. uh, first week coming into the coming into the um, tournament, bit of a rough matchup. Um, Y'all weren't able to pull out the win. A bit of a rough score line, but coming into this week, what ch what's changed? You know, it looks like you guys really have taken a new a new look to it. Yeah. So I mean, week one, uh, it was the first our first game of the of the semester. So um, I mean, the the score line, like you said, it didn't show it, but um, I thought we were close in a lot of them. Um, it was just a matter of kind of getting trades through, executing sites quicker, stuff like that. So. Um, you know, this week we were kind of hammering down, working as a team, and, you know, taking sites faster, retaking faster, doing things like that. So, um, yeah, I would say it's that, the coordination. And, I mean, you guys could see we had Red Frog just absolutely popping off, so that was helpful too. Yeah, and Trevor, you go right into my two questions. First question I want to ask you, you talk about the change of pace that you guys brought who on the team is calling for those plays? It looks like you guys ran a bunch of executes that were practiced, they were precise. Who on the team is making those calls and what are the what are the communications looking like as you guys are doing that? Yeah, so it kind of varies every week uh, as far as the uh, what the comms are like. It's usually, I mean, I, I would say it's usually pretty relaxed. Uh, something else we're kind of working on is clearing up comms a little bit because we, we just like having a good time. Uh, but yeah, uh, as far as who makes the calls, uh, I typically make the calls, but it's, you know, it's open. It, you know, whoever sees a, an opening, we just gun for it. So we're, we kind of are focusing on building everyone's IQ as high as we can get it so that everyone's able to see and make the plays whenever they're there. Absolutely. I totally understand. Anytime you're playing with people, you you like teammates that you love playing with it's going to get a bit chaotic you want the vibes flowing in speaking of teammates you may like talk to me about the man the myth the legend we saw them pop off today on that cypher i mean red frog is just insane what's it like playing with him and do you, does how does that help you do you think you can take crazier fights because you know someone's gonna pull out that 3v1 4v1 clutch like we saw a couple of times oh yeah it's I mean, it's so comforting because I know that, yeah, I can just be, you know, the entry that I got to be, which is, you know, just sacrifice myself with whatever it takes. And then I'll have a team that can, you know, clean up. And especially when we got a teammate like, yeah, Red Frog, who, you know, he got like three, four Ks in the first game. And then he had a couple of clutches in the second game. So, I mean, yeah, it's so nice to have, you know, some like some uh, supporting role that can uh, clean up the game real quick. Looks like we're getting a couple Absolutely. of highlights there of some of the action <laughs> from Red Frog. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, before you go, are there any shout outs that you have for any of your teammates or any of your friends that may be watching the stream? Yeah, so I got one shout out. Uh, it's for a teammate because uh, I think he said it in chat, but I don't know if it ever made it into the stream. But uh, Jaller's mama. He wanted to say hi, mama. So. <laughs> <laughs> well there you Certainly go give some love gotta keep it wholesome here on the channel well thank you so much for joining <laughs> us veggie clapper everybody that is coyote esports taking home the big win today in a pretty impressive show but that is going to do it for us here at the cf1 channel so we just want to let you remind you guys of the big action coming up next. It's going to be on Monday, and that is going to be Kennesaw State versus the University of North Texas. I know I'm I'm, I'm rooting for Texas in, in that fight, but make sure you're there at 8 p.m. so you don't miss all of that action. Speezy, is there anything you wanted to say before we sign off? Steidl, it's been an absolute pleasure casting with you today. And again, congrats to the Coyotes. You guys had a great performance. Thank you, thank Looks you. like you got a beautiful facility behind you. So glad to see that the investment is paying off. Also want to give a huge yeah, shout out off. and thank you to our production team, Lawrence, as well as uh, Juke and everyone else behind the scenes at CF1. Thanks for making this possible. Stadl, I had a blast tonight. I don't know about you. I had an absolute blast as well. So as we let you guys go, just remember a couple of things. Stay safe, 
Don't be toxic and have a wonderful evening.